Hello there. In this video we're going to introduce a new type of probability density function known as the log normal the log normal distribution which has the density function uh, given above. We're going to describe properties of this distribution, go into Desmos and look at a couple graphs, calculate probabilities and expected values, standard deviations of it, and also explain a couple types of random variables that actually might have this type of distribution associated to it. Alright, let's begin by discussing where this log normal distribution actually is built from. So it starts with this. So let's assume that y is a normal random variable with mean, mu, and standard deviation, sigma. Then the variable x, which is defined to be equal to e, to the power of y will follow a log normal distribution. This is pretty much the main case. So if you take the normal distribution and you exponentiate it, then the shape of that will be your log normal distribution. So a couple properties of this distribution. So if x is log normal, then it has a mean and a variance that is related to the mean and the variance of the normal random variable. So e of x is going to be equal to e to the power of mu plus one half sigma squared. So these terms are in the exponent, uh, lowercase e. And the variance of a log normal random variable is going to be equal to e to the two mu plus two sigma squared minus e to the two mu plus sigma squared. I'm not going to go through the proof of these. Uh, they require a little bit of algebraic uh, and some calculus manipulations. So I'll just give them to you straight out. So let's just look at a quick graph or a quick sketch of the graph of a log normal distribution. So of course x can only be a positive number since exponentials are always positive. So it's going to be p of x or not p of x, but f of x. So the graph of a log, norm, log normal distribution is going to have this type of shape. This is not a straight line. Let's assume it's like a decreasing curve. There we go. That looks a little bit more appropriate. All right. So a couple observations if you believe that this sketch is uh, true. So this is going to be uh, heavily skewed to the right distribution. Since the support is 0 to infinity, uh, most of the data is going to be on the left uh, with pretty much nothing on the right hand side. So when is this going to be useful? So this is going to be useful for variables x that produce, firstly, large values, since exponentials grow really, really large, and occasional outliers. So remember the normal distribution is pretty much symmetric. Uh, everything is situated between, say, four standard deviations from the mean. That's pretty much 100% of the data. But if you start having a couple outliers introduced in this data set, the data is going to be slightly skewed um, to some direction, either to the left or to the right. So for the log more normal distribution, we're only going to be allowing outliers on the right-hand side, in the right only. Uh, if you have outliers that are on the left-hand side, then you have to sort of do some algebraic transformations on the function, which we can get into later, of course, but that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, and uh, the values of x should only be positive. Because if you remember in the actual PDF of the log normal distribution, so remember f of x is going to be equal to 1 over sigma x square root of 2 pi times e to the minus 1 half to the power of natural log of x minus mu over sigma the quantity squared. 
So remember, you cannot take the natural log of negative numbers, at least in the real case, which is what we're looking at. So the values of x must be positive. That must be true. Uh, if the values of x occasionally have outliers, and they're usually large values, they don't need to be, uh, then a log normal distribution most likely is going to be appropriate. So uh, if we want to summarize this in a very uh, cute representation, so we can say if a data set of values of the form natural log of xk, so natural log of x1 plus natural log of x2 is approximately equal to a normal distribution, then t is equal to xk follows a log normal distribution. So if you take a set of values and you take the natural log of all of those numbers and it looks to be bell-shaped, you know, about 99% of the data falls within three standard deviations and all those other properties, then if you take away that natural log, assuming that xk are all positive, then the set t of xk's follows a log normal distribution. So let's look at a particular example. So example, suppose that the body mass index, or BMI, which is sometimes a, uh, measured in kilograms per meter squared in a population, follows a log normal distribution with mu is equal to 3.1 and sigma is equal to 0.18. So remember, mu equals 3.1 and sigma is equal to 0.18 are not the mean and the standard deviation of the log normal distribution. That is the mean and the standard deviation of the original values. So pretty much what we have here is we have a set of BMIs. So we have a set of BMIs. So we have like x1, x2, all the way out to say x capital N for population, let's assume. And the natural log of all of these numbers, because BMI should only be a positive number, if we take the natural log of all of them, so the natural log of this data set is going to be equal to the natural log of x1, natural log of x2, all the way down to natural log of xn. So remember, this set has a mean mu standard deviation sigma. That's what we're looking at. So the set of BMIs have a mean, have a mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. And if we take the natural logarithm of all those values, so if we look at the graph of these values and it looks pretty much like a normal distribution, that will imply that this set here follows a log normal distribution with these parameters mu and sigma. And that, of course, distribution has a particular mean and standard deviation that depends on mu and sigma, of course. So that's pretty much what we're looking at. So if we were to randomly select a person from the population, what would be the expected BMI? So what would be the expected BMI of a randomly selected person? Uh, what would be the standard deviation of the BMIs in the entire population? And also, what is the probability that a randomly selected person from this population has a BMI between 2.9 and 3.4? So let's go to Desmos and work all these things out. All right. So I've pretty much typed in my log normal distribution uh, with my parameters m is equal to 3.1 and s is equal to 0 0.18. Remember, m does not represent the mean of the distribution of BMIs. m represents the parameter that is associated to the mean of the log of the normal random variable values. So make sure not to get those things mixed up. So let's find the average BMI for the entire population. So remember, the expected value is going to be equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity, or over the support, which in this case is 0 to infinity, of x times f of x dx. Or I could use that special formula for e, which is little e raised to the power mu plus 1 half sigma squared x. They should give you the same as that value, of course. So the average BMI for my population in this case is going to be 22.56 kilograms per meter squared. So the standard deviation, of course, we can find by the second moment first. So the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared times f of x, 
dx. So my standard deviation, or my variance, is going to be me equal to my second moment minus my mean squared. Second moment minus mean squared. So my standard deviation, of course, is going to be equal to the square root of variance. So that's going to be my standard deviation for my BMIs for my population. Now, before I asked, what is the probability that a BMI was between 2.9 and 3.4? This should not give any meaningful value because most of our area is located in between, at least from the graph, 16 to 26. So let's find another probability. Let's find the probability that our BMI is in between 18 and, say, 27. So that's just going to be equal to the integral from 18 to 27 of a probability density function. So a randomly selected person from the population will have a BMI between 18 and 27. Uh, about 74% of them will have this. So that's pretty much a general overview of the log normal distribution. So firstly, a couple of things that you definitely should understand is that if the log of a set of positive values is approximately normal, then the set of values without the log will follow a log normal distribution which is extremely common if you have a lot of large values with an occasional outlier in them. For example, for the BMIs, yes, most may be normally distributed, but occasionally you will have some values with a larger BMI than others, which is typically associated to, say, obesity or something of the sorts. So I hope this gives you a basic idea of the log normal distribution. There's definitely a lot of things that could be said about this, but this video is only serving just as an introduction to this distribution.